So my kids keep me humble. Unfortunately, Kamala Harris doesn't have anything keeping her humble. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders is getting some pushback for basically uh, calling Kamala Harris childless. Uh, now, uh, Harris has two stepchildren via her husband, Doug M. Hoff's previous marriage. But apparently, being a stepparent doesn't count, which means Republicans are doing their weird attack on stepparents again. So I, I thought they were whole, done with that whole thing, uh, but no, apparently not. Uh, now, apparently they believe that unless, uh, at least Sarah Huckabee Sanders believes that unless you squeeze it out of your own garage, you're not a real mother. Great, lovely. Um, and, and, and yet she claims, well, they keep me humble. Do they? Really? Humble ain't the word that I would uh, describe for Sarah Huckabee Sanders, okay? Uh, perhaps evil, <laughs> that's one word. Uh, that I would use, but uh, you know what she means, though. Basically, what she's saying is not humble. Oh, that that uh, Kamala Harris man, she is she's too uppity. She doesn't know her place. There's nobody to keep uh, keep her humble to know that she belongs in the kitchen. Again, this is a way to attack women in general. And what better way to the, than uh, republic for Republicans to attack women than to use women? I mean, they do this all the time. They use women to attack other women. Use black people to attack other black people, et cetera, et cetera. You know that's how it works. All right, so now, anyway, her and Vance basically believe that your only true worth as a woman is for childbearing and child rearing. That's it. Women who don't do that, not only are you not immoral, oh no, but you're also too cocky, nobody to keep you in your place. Too confident, not humble enough, not demure. Okay, uh, they, uh, you know, their their places. It's in the kitchen or the birth and babies. Really? Then what are you doing there as uh, governor, um, <laughs> Sarah? What are you doing? Uh, again, this is what the far right believes, and these are the people who falsely claim the Democrats they actually hate families. Right? I don't hate families. <laughs> the reality is that the United States of America right now, because of the conservatives, because of the Republican Party. It's actually incredibly hostile to raise a family in. I mean, you've got a mass shooting pretty much every week, many of them happening at schools, but you also have health care that's too expensive. You've got no child care, okay? You have uh, children in poverty that can't afford to eat, all right? You got J.D. Vance's plan for that, uh, for, for child care, for example, uh, is to get Mima and Papa to do more child care for you. That's not a real plan, okay? They don't have any plans to address child poverty, except for to, to make more children be in poverty. Not only do they not have plans to help people raise families, but they want to force women to have children that they either don't want or can't afford with their abortion bans. This is, this is why they got rid of Roe. It actually achieves two of their aims, using pregnancy as a way to punish women for having sex, okay? And secondly, using families, using children, unwanted children, uh, as a way to keep people desperate and poor and when people are desperate and poor, they do not question authority. They do not question the church. They do not question the politicians. That's right. More babies born to poor families means more desperate low-income workers or soldiers that they can use to extract wealth and resources from overseas for corporate benefactors. That's it. In fact, last year, Sanders had signed a bill into law making it easier for employers in Arkansas to hire children. It's not because there weren't enough, uh, enough adults that would work these jobs. Oh, no, it's because the adults were demanding higher wages because they can't afford to live on what they're being paid. So their solution to that is, well, let's just get the children to work. That's it. These companies labeled corrupt Republicans in Arkansas to pass a child labor bill and then told Sarah Huckabee Sanders to sign it, and she did. Now, according to the Washington Post, the Foundation for Government Accountability and its lobbying arm, the Opportunity Solutions Project, are behind the pushes for child labor bills that had been introduced by Republicans in Arkansas, Iowa, and Missouri. The FGA's five largest donors in 2022 were the Ed Ulean uh, Family Foundation, the 85 Fund, a nonprofit connected to political operative Leonard Leo, the Sarah Scaife Foundation, the Cyril Freedom Trust, and the Donors Trust, all, of course, uh, generally backed or uh, run by billionaires. Right. 
So Sarah did exactly what her wealthy paymasters bid her to do because that is her job. The FGA, by the way, it's important to note that they're a member of the advisory board for Project 2025. Yes, which, by the way, if you read in Project 2025, that would allow miners to work in dangerous conditions like factories with few, if any, workplace protections. So, specifically, Project 2025 calls on the Department of Labor to, quote, amend its hazard order regulations to permit teenage workers access to work in regulated jobs with uh, proper training and parental consent. Ah, okay. Plain English, though, revising these hazard order regulations means allowing teenagers to work hazardous jobs instead of, you know, going to school. Uh, that's the pro-family party, right? The so-called pro-family Republicans wanting to send your kids off to the dangerous factories, to send them off to the mines, the meatbagging plants, instead of getting an education and going to school. Of course, Republicans have also cut education uh, and are famously against education because, oh, it's a liberal plot to trans your kids or something. No. No, the result of all of these Republican policies, their wish list is to drive down your wages, right? Because now you've got competition from your children that are coming in uh, to take the jobs, the dangerous jobs, at lower pay, okay? Dilute union power because, you know, all that competition, uh, fighting with your fellow worker, you're not going to want to unionize with them. And, of course, it would enrich large corporations who save money. Because as wages go down, well, <laughs> their profits go up. That, all of that, does not sound at all pro-family. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon in order to get notified whenever a new video is released. And if you want to support independent, progressive media through this difficult time where it seems like everybody is shutting down, you can become a member on our YouTube page, a subscriber on Facebook, or you can go to my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Thank you.